I'm Emeril Lagasse, and welcome to The Essence of Emeril. You know, if you're a chocolate lover, or if you know someone who is, this is the show for you, because today I'm going to spend the entire show on chocolate, a food that has been adored since the Aztecs dominated Mexico. You know, they believed chocolate was the food of the gods and an aphrodisiac. Even today, it would be hard to find a chocolaholic who would disagree, like me. Anyway, when the famous explorer Cortes brought the beans back to Spain, that's the cacao beans, the Europeans added sugar to the recipe and actually made it into a chocolate drink that immediately became popular throughout all of Europe. In fact, that's how chocolate, you know, was consumed for hundreds of years until someone found a way to make a hardened candy bar, the kind I used to, oh, boy, I'll tell you. You know, actually a funny story about growing up, uh, and it wasn't funny at the time, I could never really eat dark chocolate as a kid. So uh, at Easter time or special times when I got chocolate, I uh, actually used to have to have white chocolate. Uh, these are a little white chocolate nuggets. Uh, this is a white chocolate, a block of white chocolate. Uh, and of course, this is the unsweetened and then semi-sweet chocolate and uh, these pistoles right here, um, actually, there's a story about them. That's actually, they're not a particular candy. This is actually how they're packaged. And the reason why that is, this is the chocolate that we use at Emeralds right now. And uh, it's from a good friend of mine. His name is Jim Walsh. And uh, the company is Hawaiian Vintage Chocolate, which is the only vintage chocolate it's actually just like wine. It's actually a vintage chocolate. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it because it's that interesting. But it's also the only chocolate made in all of North America on the big island of Hawaii. That's right, the big island of Hawaii. And how they ship them is with this pistoles. You see, Jim Walsh, uh, after many years of consulting and looking around the world for the best cacao trees, uh, suddenly he he found them and decided to do a ranch uh, and realizing that Hawaii was the perfect growing season, uh, he decided that uh, he would do Hawaiian vintage chocolate. And actually, you see, uh, when cacao, the cacao trees and the cacao beans itself, when they are fallen and they ripen, and actually what happens is that the, the bean itself, after it's taken out, is actually aged for one full year. So this particular pistols that we're using at the restaurant right now and uh, some, some selected chefs uh, and restaurant tours across America making their pastries, they're uh, packaged in eight pound packages, uh, four packages to, uh, to a case. We get them in from Hawaii. This is actually um, like I said, a 92, a 90, 91 vintage going on right now. They're making a little bit of white chocolate. One of the key ingredients, which is why I have it here, and also in chocolate, you see there's a process of after the chocolate ages, it actually gets pulverized in this machine. And uh, that process goes on for uh, 24, 48, sometimes three days. The Hawaiian vintage chocolate, five days. So that way the, the taste and the flavor and explosion of chocolate that's in your palate uh, lingers on for a long time because of the process used by Jim Walsh and by Hawaiian Vintage. Now, there's a lot, a lot of other great uh, Velrona, a lot of great chocolates out there that I love to cook with and love to bake with. And this is one of the great ingredients and important ingredients inside uh, of chocolate and that is vanilla bean. You see that? This is actually a whole vanilla bean and this is actually a bean that's split. And you see that? You see all those little pellets, those pellets of vanilla that's on my fingertip there? That's the vanilla and uh, that is a great ingredient used in, I love vanilla, used in chocolate. And as you know, chocolates, they're done in many different shapes and sizes from chocolate beans to uh, all kinds of candies to packages to pistoles. And uh, let me tell you something. When we come back, 
I've got an unbelievable recipe for a great chocolate dish, one that I do in the restaurant, one that's been with me a long time. It is chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. Lagasse here on the Essence of Emerald, and I told you we were going to devote the whole show to chocolate, and uh, that's exactly what we're doing. And actually, what I'm doing right now is just over a double boiler, I'm melting a little bit of chocolate for this fabulous chocolate dessert that I told you about. I think you've got enough history and knowabouts and whereabouts of chocolate that I'm using, so I guess it's time now to show you a great chocolate dessert. You know, once you uh, use a double boiler, a lot of people think that when you're melting chocolate over a double boiler that you can just sort of forget about it, and that's not true because you don't want to burn the cocoa butter inside of this chocolate, so you want to be sure to stir it and work it and work it off and on the heat if you're using a double boiler. Look at that nice sheen and that nice, mmm, woo. Now, I've got chocolate. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit of butter. Now you can do it in whole st uh, stage or you can do it slightly melted as I, I just did. And actually this dessert that we're doing is sort of like a, uh, a fudge, a chocolate fudge. And of course being in New Orleans, I, uh, I've added pecans to it as well. And now I'm working and in incorporating that all that butter right into our chocolate. And now I've got a really nice sheen. You see that? All right. Now, we'll let that uh, just sort of very, very low heat. What I've done also is I've taken some egg yolks and, uh, and sugar. And what I've done is I've really have whisked and whisked and whisked these. And um, now it's, this is what they call, you can also just sort of, you see that little rose petal in there that it will make? This is a ribbon. And the way that you can also tell a ribbon if it's cooked enough is actually by making a mock or a pass through it and you count how many seconds it takes for it to come back together. And if you want a three second ribbon or a five second ribbon, that's exactly what you do. You make a mock and wait to see how long it passed. We wanna get this to that ribbon effect. When we get it to that ribbon effect and it's really done the right way, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this egg yolk and we're going to actually add this egg yolk and sugar mixture right into this chocolate mixture that's over the heat and now we're going to sort of temper the egg yolks so that they cook a bit. That's right. And now we get rid of that and uh, you want to be really careful on um, Let's get rid of some of this chocolate off our spoon. Get some of our ribbon out of there. There we go. And you want to be careful now. Um, you don't want the eggs to scramble. So you've got to be careful on how hot your double boiler is. What you want to do is you want to sort of mix that egg yolk mixture into the chocolate mixture and the butter mixture. And uh, we're going to cook this up a little bit. You see it's starting to get thick and fudgy. Well, I told you it was a chocolate fudgy cake. Now, the same thing with the uh, meringue. What I did when we were on the break is I made an Italian meringue and basically what I did is I took the sugar with a little bit of water and uh, in a sauce pot I just sort of dissolved that and brought the temperature up of that sugar and uh, water mixture, very little water. And I put it on my mixer machine and I just really whisked it and whisked it and whisked it up. And then as the temperature started coming back down, what I began to do then is add my whites so that they also temper and cook and really get those good, good and stiff. You really want to get it good and stiff. So we'll check our chocolate mixture again. I told you it's getting like fudge, right? Now I'm going to turn the heat off 
off of our du double boiler because like I said I don't want I don't want the chocolate mixture to break and I also don't want the egg mixture to turn to scrambled eggs with too much heat as well now when we get that we get those egg whites with our Italian meringue just stiff enough now the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to get those egg whites right out of the bowl and into this mixture here and uh, you don't see a lot of lot of uh, Italian meringues these days anymore but boy I'll tell you they sure work and uh, sure you can rely on them now I'm going to take this off and what we're going to do folks is now we're going to take our mixture and we want to fold this we want to fold it we're not stirring it we're actually folding the meringue into our yolk as well as our chocolate mixture hey maybe you want to add a little bit of your favorite uh, liqueur to this but uh, let me tell you something this thing is so rich so delicious who it will uh, satisfy any chocolate-holic. Now, you see how light it's starting to look now because of the meringue? Well, you wait till it's finished. This is a crucial part of the dish right here. We're just sort of folding in not only the chocolate mixture, but also we're folding in the whites and all the ingredients together. And that's basically all of the ingredients that we have, except for one, as I mentioned earlier, and that is the pecans. Now, if you don't... Uh, have pecans or if you don't like pecans hey you can use walnuts you can use pistachios I've made it with pistachios it's actually fantastic with uh, pistachios that you can crush up a little bit chop them up and use pistachios instead of pecans but you know the thing about this dessert is I'm gonna do it in a spring form pan but that's because I'm a spring form pan kinda guy and I've lightly buttered, and you can use a vegetable spray, the sides as well as the bottom. And obviously why I'm using the spring form pan is so that it's much easier to unmold. Now, if you want to use a terrine, an individual mold, fantastic. But what I'm going to do is I actually want to put a little bit on the bottom of some pecans. And you can crush them. You can do it any way you want. And then what we want to do is then put our filling mixture from the bowl right inside our spring form pan get all that good stuff right there and then look if you want to put some more nuts and things on top whatever turns you on you can do that that's fantastic but the great thing about this is that you just put it right in the ice box. Or you can even put it in the freezer. It freezes well. Let's move this guy out of here for a minute because what I want to do is I want to show you the one that I got. I got this one right here. And what you want to do is you want to get a knife. This is good and cold. It keeps for days and days and days. It's just chocolate. And then what we want to do is we sort of want to unmold that. That's another good thing about having the spring form pan is that you can just sort of unmold it just like that. And uh, away that goes. And then you have this delicious, look at that, this delicious fudge chocolate. I got pecans in there. And uh, I'm going to just kind of get a wedge of this. I told you, it's just like fudge. And you just kind of cut a few slices. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Woo woo. Mm hmm. Hey, folks. I got a little bit of white chocolate sauce. I figured, hey, no uh, chocolate dessert would be any good without any chocolate sauce and a little powdered sugar. And then you can simply just put a few of these guys like that and then I've got to have a little bit of whipped cream because this is so rich I mean you got to have a little bit of whipped cream we'll put a little bit of mint like that and uh, call your friends in because this is unbelievable delicious chocolate chocolate fudge after the break another one of my favorite chocolate desserts stay with me we'll be right back
Joe Lagasse, and the whole show is on chocolate. And speaking about chocolate, I'm making a little chocolate genoise, which means a little chocolate cake. And I'm cooking the egg yolks and the sugar over this double boiler till it gets to that nice ribbon. You see that? Till it gets to a nice ribbon like that. And then what we're going to do is I've taken all of my dry ingredients and I've sifted it through a little sifter. Flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those ingredients and fold them right inside of our egg yolks that we had. And also, a little bit of butter. Got to have some butter. Yes, indeed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix that all into a great batter. You can see this batter that we have right here. It's a cake batter. Then put it inside of a floured pan, bake it for about 20, 25 minutes, and boy, you want to talk about a delicious cake. When it comes out of the oven, you get this beautiful chocolate Genoise cake. Now, Genoise means light and airy and, you know, just it's not a heavy, dense cake. It's a very light cake. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to unmold that chocolate Genoise. And I'm using a little rack to unmold that, okay? Also, what I have here is I have cream reduced with chocolate, as we've done before, making a ganache. Don't have any liqueur in it, just a ganache. Now, what I'm going to do with my Genoise is I'm going to, I'm going to do, you could do three layers, four layers. I'm just going to do one nice layer. I've got a great serrated knife, okay? I've got a great serrated knife, and that's the way that you should work on a serrated knife. Like I said, look, if you want to do it two layers, three layers, that's beautiful. That's fine, but we're going to just do it two layers. Look at that. It's the inside of that. You see all those little air pockets? Now, look, I've got a little bit of raspberry filling, a little pureed raspberries, okay? I'm going to put some raspberry filling, just really, really good and nice like that, because mm, I love chocolate and raspberries. Woo, baby, yes, a little raspberry filling. Now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to just give it a little bit of a little sugar, make it a little sweeter, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and make a little sandwich. I'm going to make a little, a little sandwich. Mmm, hey, how about a bite? Now what I'm going to do is put this back on the rack, and underneath that I have a little pan so that I can capture my Genoise. And what do I mean by that? Well, after I cook my Genoise, I just want to take my Genoise like that, and then with a palette knife, I just want to sort of ooze that Genoise all over the sides and the bottom. Whoo! Look at that, huh? You see, in that way, the chocolate catches. And then it really just, if you just take that and if you let that refrigerate uh, and it gets nice and crusty, the whole Genoise. Well, let's pretend that if it was nice and crusty right now, what I would do is I would be able to take and cut a big wedge, a little wedge, just like that, of this raspberry Genoise cake. Huh? A little raspberry Genoise cake, if this was good and hard right now. You see that? And I'd turn it up on the side just like that. And then if I had any extra Genoise, I'd stick my finger in it, and I would just sort of, oh, let's just give it a little, mm, 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 a little of that design. Then... I probably what I would do from there is probably just add some more raspberries since we had that delicious raspberry filling in the center and I would just give it a little bit of raspberry like that and uh, I love raspberries you like raspberries mm mm I love them then I probably because of all that chocolate and raspberry might need to have a little dollop of cream and probably just a little bit of mint, because I like mint. And then I'd probably give him one or two of these little beans like that. Then I would take some more chocolate and just shake it all around. And hey, why not make it really good and sweet, huh? The awesome history of chocolate, the chocolate, the chocolate fudge with pecans, and the favorite of mine from early childhood, a chocolate genoise cake with raspberries and uh, ganache, because I love ganache, and I love raspberry, and I hope you love the show, because I know you're going to love it tomorrow if you join me. I'll see you tomorrow on The Essence of Emerald.